year 2001, I started going to a madrasa, an Islamic school nestled deep within the ancient city of Pabna. It was here that I met Ubaidullah, a boy who would become my classmate, my friend, and eventually the source of my deepest fears. Ubaidullah was generous, always buying food for me after class. He had an odd way about him, though. One day he asked me to follow him after school. We walked until we reached the edge of a vast rice field. He pointed into the distance, his eyes gleaming with an unsettling excitement. Habibullah, he said, let me show you something. Deep in that field, there's a bird that cannot fly. You'll be able to catch it easily. Skeptical but curious, I ventured into the field. The air grew thick and an unnatural silence enveloped me. Suddenly I spotted it a bird, helpless and unable to fly. I caught it easily and returned to Ubaidullah, who simply told me to release it. Bewildered, I did as he asked. At times, I would be puzzled by his odd requests. We shared a room in the school. Often, I would wake in the middle of the night to find Ubaidullah's bed empty. His absence was haunting, but more disturbing with a fateful night when I joined other boys from the dorm for a walk late at night. The air would fill with the most horrific screams, cries for help that seemed to pierce the soul. We would huddle together, trembling, reciting verses from the Quran to protect ourselves from the jinns. The air would thicken with an otherworldly dread. Since that particularly harrowing night, Ubaidullah changed. His lively demeanor dulled, replaced by a haunting emptiness. The very next day, our teacher informed us that Ubaidullah would be leaving the school. On his final day, he asked me to accompany him to the bus station. As we walked, he made an odd request. He asked me to buy him one kilo of salt. I didn't think twice, as he used to always treat me for food. What happened next will haunt me forever. In complete shock and disbelief, I watched as he opened the bag and consumed the entire bag of salt in instant. Before boarding the bus, he taught me a dua to recite for headaches La U Sadauna Anha Wala Yunjifun and instructed me to recite Surah Ibrahim twice. Since that day, I have never seen Ubaidullah again. His memory lingers in my mind like a shadow, a reminder of the thin veil between our world and the world of jinns. I often wonder if those screams were a warning and if the bird in the field was a sign. Some doors once opened can never be closed. And so, the mysteries of that time remain unsolved. <laughs>